Good day, everyone. Welcome to another report and teaching and assessment of grammar. This time, our report is anchored from the research by Diane Larson Freeman and Dr. Haiwon Lee, entitled Teaching and Testing Grammar. These are your reporters, Precious M. Evora and Robert Busili Jr. To begin with, let us start by defining grammar. Grammar can pertain to the internal mental system that generates and interprets novel utterances or mental grammar, or the prescriptive grammar, which is a set of prescriptions about language forms and their use for a particular language. We also have the descriptive grammar, or the description of language behavior by proficient users of a language. We also have the focus on a given linguistic theory or the linguistic grammar, or a work that treats the major structures of a language, the reference grammar, or the pedagogical grammar, which is the structures and rules compiled for instruction and assessment purposes. This is made specifically for teachers, wherein teacher's grammar is the set of structures and rules compiled for instructional purposes, especially for teachers. Diane Larson Freeman defines grammar as a system of meaningful structures and patterns that are governed by particular pragmatic constraints because this definition contains the form, the meaning, and the use dimensions of grammar. For previous decades, this has been the approaches of grammar that has been undertaken by grammar teachers. First is the PPP approach that we have discussed weeks ago, or the presentation, the practice, and production of students. We also have the non-interventionist, wherein Krushen believes that to acquire grammar is to get exposure to comprehensible input in the target language. We also have the input processing, where learners are guided to pay attention to a feature in the target language input that is likely to cause a problem. And the focus and form, which is a systematic and non-interfering focus and form that produces a faster rate of learning and a probability of higher levels of second language attainment. We also have the input enhancement or the visual enhancement that involves color coding, underlining, bold facing, and enlarging the font in order to emphasize certain features of the input. Further, we have the input flooding or the priming, wherein Students are flooded with meaningful input with the target form or a syntactic priming is a speaker's tendency to produce a previously spoken or heard structure. We also have the output production or the production of outputs concerning the target language and the grammaring, which is the ability to use grammar structures accurately, meaningfully and appropriately as the proper goal of grammar instruction. This is the approach put forward by Larson Freeman. However, in teaching and testing grammar, there are related topics that we need to address and see for ourselves. First is the difference between explicit and implicit instruction, whether grammar should be taught explicitly, or that is word by word, rule by rule, and meaning by meaning or implicit instruction wherein we use various approaches such as content based, such as text driven approach, in order to implicitly teach the grammar to our students. We also have the meta language or the grammatical terminology that we have for grammar and the syllabus design, wherein Larson Freeman recommends that teacher adopt a grammar checklist rather than a sequence, so they can have an unordered set of grammar structures they need to teach. They can have structures that can be worked on as they arise in content, and they can prompt the teacher to work on certain structures that do not naturally arise during classroom activities, perhaps because students avoid them. Individual Differences 
Teachers teach grammar to particular students, and who the students are will affect grammar instruction. Hatch in 1974 stated that learners can be rule formers who memorize pattern sequences or data gatherers which have an analytic mind. Next, we have the error correction or feedback. Providing learners with feedback can be done explicitly or implicitly. The latter takes place through such means as clarification requests, confirmation checks, and recasts. Then, too, when there is a second language and first language contrast, the learner may need explicit negative feedback. Remember to always give learners feedback on their non-target-like performance in an effectively supportive way. Last is the spoken versus written grammar. According to Leach in 2002, he contends that in English, at least spoken and written forms utilize the same grammatical report words, but do so with different frequencies. There are a number of innovations underway, or at least proposed, in the way of grammar is being assessed. Innovations in grammar assessment. The first involves a definition of the grammar construct itself. Purpura in 2004 defines grammatical ability for assessment purposes as involving the capacity to realize grammatical knowledge accurately and meaningfully in test-taking or other language use contexts. Second is partial scoring. Recently, it has been proposed that scoring grammatical items politomusely would yield information about learners who have an intermediary knowledge of grammar, rather than their being treated as if they have no knowledge at all, according to Purpura 2006. Third is social dimensions of grammar teaching and assessment, which will be discussed further by the next presenters. Fourth is the standard. Another issue that could be discussed under grammar teaching or testing is the issue of what the target standard is, and this will also be discussed by the other presenters. Technology enhanced language assessment, innovative approaches for better learning. We have seen major changes in how people communicate. Today, we are forced to adopt to the new normal and utilize the scientific innovations that this modern world offers, especially in the world of education. Video conferencing technology has removed the physical barrier of face-to-face -face communication over a distance, allowing us to reach out conveniently to people from all over the world. Distance learning that allows students to attend classes and access learning materials remotely has made education more affordable and flexible. Digital learning environment enables students to set their own pace of study and teachers to track progress more efficiently. And these technological advances in the educational context as well as our daily life have greatly impacted the assessment of English language proficiency. Our endeavors to integrate new technology for the better have had several outcomes such as adoptive testing based on a candidate's level of ability. Computer adoptive testing or CAT is based on the tailoring of test questions to each candidate's language ability. CAT, currently available in listening and reading tests, provides questions according to a candidate's test performance. This individualized test may give candidates a more positive test experience by reducing their anxiety or fatigue during test taking. Because an adoptive test consists mostly of items targeted at language skills associated with a specific level of ability, it is commonly shorter in length than a paper-based linear test and can offer immediate results by the end of the test. Quick reporting of results enhanced by all enabled marking. Computer-based tests in general can increase flexibility and efficiency in test administration and scoring. Automated marking of writing and speaking skills is also made possible by recent advances of AL. The writing module of LinguaSkill, for example, is marked by an auto-marker and a group of human examiners. 
various modes of testing available for the stakeholders. Candidates thus enjoy the freedom to select the test mode which reflects their primary means of communication. For example, the listening, reading, and writing components of IELTS are currently available in both paper-based and computer-based versions. Instantaneous feedback for enhancing learning and teaching. With the support of fast developing technology, learners can receive instant, detailed-oriented automated feedback on their performances, which can promote individualized learning more effectively. Automated feedback equips teachers with knowledge of their students and enables learners to take control of their learning. Right and improve is an example of this, where learners can practice and improve their writing skills with the help of all-powered automated feedback. Learners can submit their work to this free online tool repeatedly and make changes referring to real-time, machine-generated birth and sentence-level feedback on their working drafts. Last, we have innovative assessment for the future. New digital assessment and learning is expected to take over more innovative forms, such as Quiz Your English. It is a gamified multiplayer mobile application for practicing vocabulary and grammar skills. We also have game-based assessment, which is seen as a fun and ideal way to immerse learners in the cycle of learning and assessment, and the virtual reality technology which is being trialed as a medium for simulating real-life tasks and eliciting more authentic learner performance. It is true that language assessment is evolving into a new phase, but it should be always remembered that learners are at the center of every aspect of the process, and we make these changes to better help people learn English and prove their skills to the world.